Hi, welcome back to the farm. My name's Roz, also known as Passion Flower, and you'll find me here each week talking about my farming and creative life. Firstly, a big thank you for your love and support after last week's episode. Um, it was a really hard video to record and also to edit. Uh, there was a lot of tears that day and also a lot of tears when it went live on the Sunday. And I really do appreciate all of you who reached out and, and shared your, your thoughts and feelings with me. I know that if you've been watching this video for any length of time, you would have seen him uh, weighed my dog on numerous occasions. And it, it is sad that he is now gone, but um, it actually helped me to talk about it and to record that and to feel a little bit vulnerable and to ugly cry on video. And um, yeah, I really appreciate everyone who sent me a message. And uh, so thank you for all of the love. I think I mentioned last week that I was going to uh, plant something in my garden as a, like a memorial for him. Uh, that's kind of what we do in this family when when one of our pets pass, um, you know, something that is um, a, a living, feeling thing that you can see every day. So I have ordered a bare rooted rose for the garden outside the front of my place, which should be coming at the end of June. It is a really dark red and it has a very high fragrance. I'm really quite excited about the, the rose itself um so I've got to plan a spot where I'm going to put it I think I know where it's going to go I need to prune back the current roses that I have and then there will be a nice spot for it so I need to dig a hole and get it ready uh, it will come by mail in a box bare rooted I'll show you when it arrives I've bought from these people before it's Trelaw roses and um, they're really fantastic. And so you get them over winter when they're bare rooted and not growing. You can literally get them sent in the mail and then you can just plant them in your garden. So uh, that's what I'll be doing. And then that will be my reminder of Wade and I'll be able to see it every single day. Honestly, there hasn't been a lot of other real um, activity this week. I think it maybe is kind of good because it means there was no drama, <laughs> but there's actually not a lot to share with you in terms of farm. It is certainly feeling like winter, as you can see from my outfit that I'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, this morning it was below zero. Um, that's below 32 for those in the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, so d zero degrees Celsius. Um, we had frost on the ground, we had fog and um, even now it is only, what does my app say? I was just checking it just before. Uh, even now it's only four degrees so that's why I'm rugged up I've got the fire just started um, I've got thermals on underneath my jumper so I'm not too bad right now and the irony is when you start to get a fire ready and you bring firewood in and do all that you actually get yourself quite warm and then you start the fire and you're like oh well now I'm really hot so you are uh, you kind of get into a good groove when you, you get the winter wool, woolies going and the winter warm fire going as well. I've also got a, a pair of Uggs over here in the shed that I put on when I come over. So I take off my gumboots and I will pop my Uggs on. So I'm normally quite cozy over here. Then during summer, I'll just wear like thongs or slides. But when it's cooler, definitely the slippers. Because it's been a bit colder, I've done a few things indoors. Instead, I did rearrange my clothes and linen situation. Stupidly, I didn't take a photo before, so I can't really show you the comparison. Um, I have done other videos where I've done clean outs and shown things, but this one I got halfway through and went, oh, I didn't take a photo or a video of what it looked like before. Oh, well. So what I've done is... I was using the cupboard that is in where my bed is. So background, my my unit is, it's like three rooms. It's a bathroom and then two other rooms. And I've kind of switched them around. So the entry room, which had like a linen cupboard, I now use as the bedroom. 
And the other room, which is supposed to be the bedroom, I now use as like my sitting lounge crafting space because it's got like a sort of a bay window and it's a much nicer spot to sit and it's lighter for doing craft. And then where the bed is, is sort of darker and out of the way. So I'd been using the linen cupboard as a linen cupboard and I kind of hadn't got it in my head that I could use it as my wardrobe. So the wardrobe that is in the room where I now craft, I've got the hanging side. So I've got my hanging clothes still in there. But the other side of it was a series of shelves and I'd been using tubs kind of like drawers and it was getting quite messy and it was hard to put things away. Um, And I was having to go into the other room to get dressed most of the time because it was like t-shirts and tracksuit pants, which which is what I wear 90% of the time. So what I've done is taken all of that stuff out of the wardrobe and moved it into the linen cupboard and moved the linen, so towels and bedspreads and all that kind of thing into those shelves. Um, I've been able to much more neatly arrange my jumpers, which was still in this linen cupboard, um, by putting the tubs on their sides and having them open and stacking them in and, and only having a few in, in each space. Uh, so far, it's been like a week. Um, I feel like I can now see the majority of my clothes and the things that are in the tubs are some summer things, uh, things that I don't wear all that often, like bathers and some linen scarves. So I've been able to organise things a little bit better. We'll see how it goes. Um, I think I will end up culling more clothes because I can now see them all and I'll be able to really easily see the things that I grab all the time and the things that end up like really going to the bottom of the pile because they'll be the things that I don't wear very often. So I've been gradually over time doing decluttering and clearing things out and I think this will just continue that process and um, I'll hopefully have clothes that I love to wear and wear frequently and not have a whole lot that just sits there doing nothing. But I think we all end up doing that. You just gravitate to the favourites at the top. A whole lot more dyeing again this week. It's only two weekends until, well, next weekend actually, uh, until the Colac All Fibre and Yarn Festival and then the Lancefield All Fibre and Yarn Festival. So that's the 10th and 11th of June. So not this weekend, but next. I'm really looking forward to those events. So I'm getting all of my sock yarn dyed up now. I've done a big batch of gumball machine. If you've seen me at any of the other shows I've done, you will know that that is one of my most popular colorways and normally sells out, especially on the sock yarn. So I've got a big batch of that done. Uh, I've done some rose hip and some, uh, what have I got there? Salmon and smoke and princess of pink so just stocking up on the colors that i knew that i was lacking i will be rescanning those this afternoon they are just finishing drying in front of the fire now hopefully the fire is still going oh yes it's roaring it's really good and i have finished rescanning all of the dk yarn and as i've been finishing each colorway i've been putting it onto my rack so that i can put it into a color order and i can see what colors i have and just making sure that I have enough. So that's pretty much done now as well. I've got one more DK colour currently sitting in water. I need to rinse that and hang it to dry today as well. So then I think, unless I get a little bit carried away in panic, uh, I think that I have enough yarn. So I will be um, stopping dyeing and it'll just be about the setup and the packing down. I now also have the dimensions and the table sizes and numbers that I'm going to be having for both Colac and Lancefield. They are a more booth style, which I haven't done before. I've literally just been like straight tables at the other events that I've been to. So this will be a bit of a new experiment as to how I'm going to set everything up. So I'm thinking I might use one of those sort of planner tools and like map out the size and the size of the tables and the size of my stands and do a few kind of Um, just sort of furniture plans first to try and figure out where everything's going to go. And then I will play here in the shed. I can spread out and actually mark out the space and put things in different spots and see how it feels and looks. So that will be the job for the next few days after the rescaining's done. 
uh, to sort of get an idea of how that's all going to work. Uh, my mum is coming with me to both of those shows to help me with the driving and the setup because they're back to back. It's um, nice to have someone else to support and at least bring you coffee and food over the few days that you're uh, basically on your feet selling all day. So um, if I can have a plan that she can help me with as well and I'm clear about what I want to do, it'll be easier for setup and pack down for then reset up the next day. So um, yeah, I kind of need to have a really clear idea in my head of how that's all going to go. I've also been thinking about some other things that I might be able to sell. Um, I'm going to put together some sock sets, so full skeins wound or ready to use with uh, mini skeins for the contrast colours. Um, I'm also thinking about some scrap packs perhaps. I've got sort of bits and pieces left over from from samples and um, experiments that I might put together into little bags, sort of grab bags of different colours that you can use for some small projects um, or just to sample a little bit of my yarn. So I'll definitely get the sock sets done, but I'm not sure that I'll get around to the scrap packs. I'll see how I go. Uh, but yeah, I thought I just might add a few different bits and pieces to the shop. Well, as you can see, I am definitely very rugged up today. Uh, I have my Miranda jumper on. It is a kangaroo pouch jumper with a cable panel down the front. Um, it is super soft. I've had this jumper for quite a while now. I'm going to look up when I made this. Hang on. I made this back in 2015 uh, and I love it. I wear it quite a lot during winter. It's made from Bennett and Gregor wool in a natural colour that they call wattle bark. Um, so it's just 100% wool which makes it really beautiful and soft and warm. I really enjoyed making this jumper um, and it fits really well. The only issue is that it is quite a low neck um, so I always during winter tend to wear it with a cowl or a scarf as well. Uh, the scarf I'm wearing is it's supposed to be a scarf and I turned it which is like the just the simple Noro stripe scarf and it is with Noro yarn, and then I striped it with a black. Uh, it was, and then I it was quite short because I only had one ball of the Noro, so I just grafted it together and turned it into an infinity cowl, and it works perfectly to wear it with this. And the beanie that I'm wearing is called Molly. It's a textured pattern, and it's got a cable down this side here. Uh, and then I also adapted the pattern and made myself a set of mitts out of it as well because I had enough of the yarn left over. The yarn is Madeline Tosh DK in the kale colorway. It's not sort of a purpley black green, um, very much my colors. And um, again, it goes really well with this. Um, the reason I'm mostly wearing a beanie today is because I've been wearing a beanie most of the week and my hair is totally flat beanie hair um, so once you start wearing beanies during winter you almost have to wear them all the time because it just flattens the hair out so you have it nice for one day after you wash it and then it just goes straight down so um, you probably be seeing me wearing beanies for quite a lot of of this winter uh, unless I wash my hair on the, the morning of, of doing the recording and I don't put a beanie on beforehand. All right, so now into my knitting. I actually knit on socks this week, which I haven't done for a few weeks now, which is very rare for me. I finished the first of my confetti party socks from in the opal yarn. So they're super long. I've put in the contrasting heel, toe and cuff in a sparkly purple that I had in my stash. Uh, I did quite a number of repeats of the pattern and I've got a stack of yarn left so I can make another super long sock. I was thinking winter long socks, perfect for in gumboots and keeping my legs warm. And I did get kind of carried away and just kept going and going and then realized that they were quite long. I'm almost at the point that I potentially needed to have increased um, to go over my calf, but I think it'll be okay. So I finished it a little bit short of the green so that I can start the pink, which will be matching with this pink down here. So I will make them hopefully as close to matching in terms of striping as I can. Um, that just so that I can keep track of how long they are. Um, 
And that's basically the only reason to keep the, the striping pattern the same when I do two socks. Uh, yeah, so I haven't, as you can see, I haven't cast on the second one. It's literally just the needles. But um, yeah, I think they'll get on the needles soon. But I am still really, really into my True Stripes jumper. Um, and I've made a lot of progress on it. So last week I showed you my True Stripes top progress. I had done the back and there's the back there. Uh, and this is from the 52 weeks of Easy Knits. Technically it's not going to be 52 weeks because this has taken me a couple of weeks. The ankle took me a couple of weeks. So I'm not sure. You'd have to be a really fast knitter, I think, to be able to do each of these projects in a week. But it's a, a nice kind of way to summarize up a book and give you 52 patterns. So, um, yeah, so there's the back. I have completely finished the front. So there's the shaping for the neckline at the front. So I need to pick up these stitches once it's all sewn together to put the neckband on. I kind of fudged where I'd started the decreases because I wanted to do complete striping sequences. And I don't know if that was how it should have been done or not, but you can see I'd finished with the green and then my cast off was with the purple. So I wanted to finish with the green and cast off with the purple. Um, I know that it's not at the same spot front and back, but it just made it easier from a counting perspective in terms of the stripes. Um, so I've got the front and back done and I have just cast on and done the ribbing for the first sleeve. Um, I was thinking about maybe connecting and, and knitting the sleeves from the body down, but I think that's going to be too unwieldy having to move the whole thing around. I am just going to do the sleeves in pieces and sew them on as per the pattern. That way also too, I can put them in the right spot. Um, so this is the cuff. It feels quite small, but then when you, you look at this cuff and it's not really huge, so then I'll be doing increases out once it um, gets going. Uh, so this is um, Old Miller Green from the Knitting Man Recommends. And I've got this light green, which doesn't have a colourway name, from Colleen's Crafts. I've got this purpley pink, also from Colleen's Crafts. I've got a plain cream from Wangaratta Woolen Mills. And I've got mango daiquiri from Fluff and Nonsense. So they're my colours and that's how they're working up. And um, hopefully by next week I'll have a sleeve to show you. Well, that's it for another week. Thanks for spending some time with me. If you're enjoying these videos, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And I look forward to seeing you next week on the farm. Bye.